Mr. J. Christopher, protect the righteous with wisdom and strength. Now, take into account what you just shared with us. I'm wondering this. Does the industry, region, and size of the company change analysis that you just described to us? You know, what about race versus, and what about race versus gender, class versus sexual orientation? How does all this stuff impact the dynamic? Well, I mean, certainly. Um, the parts of the country you're in, um, the type of industry you're in, all of that makes a difference because each industry in each part of the country has a different culture. So if you're in a place where, like Atlanta, where the black population is much larger than on average and the black professional population is large, you know, there's probably going to be less problems than if you're in Utah. Got it. And you're a black American. Got it. Or the foothills of Virginia. Or, or if you're a Cuban American in Miami, your experience is going to be very different than if you're a, a Cuban in, in um, Des Moines, Iowa. Exactly. I mean, and for the millennials watching, I think that the, the one of the, the theme here is is take account and take stock of the context of your situation. Mm -hmm. You know what your personal what the the personality well more so the personal characteristic that may make you stand out. The region of the country you're in, the city you're in, the place you work, the majority in that you know the majority of that workforce. Basically, take take this stuff into account before you maybe get the neck tattoo or maybe before you wear a certain life type of clothing. Again, like you said earlier, this is not a democracy. Right. This is not about being fair. You walk through the doors of an organization, you're expected to operate and present their expectations, not yours, right? Right. So if you want to work there, that's what you got to do. And, and the thing is, is when you come in, people will judge you immediately before you even open your mouth. And so if you're coming in and you're wearing your jeans off your behind, people are going to automatically assume that you represent a certain part of the culture, which may be negative. Um, no matter where you went to school, no matter what your degrees look like, et cetera. So the thing is, um, because first impressions matter, is you want to come in representing something that's consistent with your organization so that people have as few distractions beyond your race and gender and whatnot so they can get to know you before they completely prejudge you. Unless you're walking through the door as Jay-Z or Kobe. Right. Then wear your, your jeans down to your ankles. If you right, want. but remember, <laughs> Jay-Z and Kobe did all the work beforehand. True. So by the time they walk in the door, they've got all this other stuff coming with us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I think, in, 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 and I guess this is, you make it, this is an interesting point, right? There's a nuance to this. If we're talking about artists mm -hmm. in the context of their art and in the context of uh, working for or on behalf of organizations that is engaging them as artists, there's obviously going to be a more of a sliding scale, more forgiveness because they expect you to be a little bit outside the norm. Mm -hmm. But if we're talking about people who want to quote unquote be executives or professionals, then that standard expectation is sad to say it's been set by the white man and his, you know, and, and, and all the culture that goes into what it means to be a white American. Like you said, it's not necessarily deliberately intended to exclude you, but by virtue of the approach you take, it can be exclusive and mm -hmm. you end up outside the the community, so to speak, right? Right. So, so okay, great. Let me ask you this. Mr. J. Christopher, protect the righteous with wisdom and strength.